So dear Canadian friends, dear Sanda, uh, it's really nice to have you at least online uh, in as a part of our festival edition 2021 Music Biennale Zagreb. And it's a pity, of course, that we couldn't realize uh, this project with Turning Point Ensemble in live version. But the year is as it is, and the situation is like that. So we make the best out of it, I think, uh, that's possible. Uh, I welcome Owen, Owen Underhill as an artistic co-director of Turning Point Ensemble. You're also a composer, a flutist, a conductor, probably educator also. Uh, I welcome Michael Peppa, who is uh, the founder and artistic director of the Les Amis concerts and uh, composer, educator, violinist. Uh, and I welcome Joseph Macerolo, who is a musician, a pioneer of a classical accordion, eh? educator, philanthropist, uh, uh, yeah, a very bright personality, I would say, yes. And I welcome Sanda Mayurets, who is one of our renowned, the most renowned uh, Croatian composers, also a harpsichordist and an educator. So I think we are quite uh, an interesting bunch of musicians here meeting to talk about the past, which I don't want to make as a main point. Actually, I think the future should be our main point and the thoughts on it. So if I may, I would maybe start with uh, Michael and uh, this, this, this happening in 1981 in Music Biennale Zagreb, Soundstage Canada. It was an interesting time, actually. It was not only Croatia, it was Yugoslavia uh, back then. So uh, I think it would be really interesting for us today to know what was your perception uh, of life and music uh, of the scene back then in 81? And how are things back then in Canada, actually? Also, Joseph can take this question. Well, um... <clears throat> I was at the Biennale in 1979. And uh, at that time, I met the artistic director, uh, Igor Kuleric, and Professor Stanko Horvat. Uh, the festival was absolutely amazing. So I spoke to Igor and I said, well, I, I don't think you ever had any Canadian music here or music by Canadian composers. And he said, we sure have to have some. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got very busy. And he said in 1981, which was two years later, he said, we expect you to come to Biennale with a group and perform all kinds of Canadian compositions with Canadian performers. So I was really ecstatic, of course, because this would be the first time that uh, Canadian music would be heard at such a prominent uh, uh, international contemporary music festival. So when I got back, I got in touch with Joseph Mazzarolo, who became my partner. We knew each other, of course, for quite a while before that. But we got together and we said, well, let's see what we can do about this. And I told him that the Music Biennale of 1981 would be, the main theme would be uh, musical theater. So we had to uh, get a bunch of composers together and create some pieces that would be uh, theatrical, show off. So we got two dancers, Robert de Rosier, who was a fantastic creator, and Nancy Ferguson, Joseph got uh, he was actually more uh, friendly with uh, Robert Aitken, who was and still is the director of uh, new music concerts in Toronto, who, by the way, just celebrated 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So they were around first, I believe. So we put together a bunch of people, actually 20 all together. This was a huge project because we realized that it would cost a lot of money. And Joseph, fortunately, he's very skilled in, in that way. 
So we got Canada Council, CBC, Laidlaw Foundation. He can tell you more about that. And we got some uh, old composers. I consider myself, I was young in 1981, but now I'm kind of a senior member of, of the composers in Canada. And he got uh, Marie Schaefer, of course, who unfortunately just passed away. Mm -hmm. And we put together a program that Joseph will probably tell you more about that. But the project was, of course, uh, sponsored by, as I said, Canada Council, Ontario Arts Council, and CBC actually made a documentary film of our trip. So uh, I won't say any more because I want Joseph to um, fill it in. but. Uh, we are so happy that uh, it is still remembered 40 years later. And I realize that Zagreb Biennale is celebrating 60th anniversary now. And mm -hmm. so we're ready to pass on the torch to younger composers and performers, such as the group from Vancouver now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it works with passing on the torches. <laughs> yes. Anyway, Please, so yeah, sorry. No, that's all. I, I could talk for hours because it was such a fantastic trip. And, we, should, uh, we should do that in a private Zoom one time. I would be more interested. <laughs> yes. I was yeah. born the year after, you know, so it's really good to, to hear uh, this uh, witnessing of the years before I yeah. was born. I, I just want to say that uh, uh, many years later, I met Berislav Shipush. Mm -hmm. uh, that was actually in 2007, and we became very good friends, and we are collaborating all the time, uh, Canadian uh, music at the Biennale or in Zagreb, and having Croatian composers and Cantus Ensemble here in Canada. We had them already a couple of years ago, so mm -hmm. we're looking forward to having them again. Unfortunately, Berislav could not uh, be here with us today because he's preparing for his big uh, opera premiere. So, yes. Oh, well, congratulations. It will be within this block, last block of Biennale. We are looking forward to that. Yes. Please, Joseph, continue your uh, memories and experiences from that time. I'm really interested. Well, it was an amazing time because, as you said, it was still Yugoslavia at that time. Now it's former Yugoslavia. So our trip took us to Belgrade, to Romania in Timisoara, and in Budapest, Hungary. So we had a nice tour. We started with Zagreb, went to Belgrade, then Timisoara and, and Budapest. Uh, Timisoara is uh, close to my heart because I was born there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, it was sort of a homecoming for me. They didn't know anything about me because my parents left when I was two years old. So uh, I was basically, uh, we lived in Yugoslavia in Zrenjani mm -hmm. for 10 years. In 1951, we became refugees and finally arrived in Canada in 1953. And I've been here ever since, of course. So that was a memorable trip. And I must say that I enjoyed going back to the Biennale uh, probably half a dozen times after 1981 as well. Mm -hmm. And always bringing a new generation of performers. In fact, the last time I was there, I think somebody mentioned, I said that these uh, players now like, uh, my violinist Lynn Kuo and pianist Erika Quino and so on. And I was mentioning that I'm coming here now with the children of the musicians and performers in 1981. And somebody <laughs> said, we'd like to see you here with their grandchildren. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Anyway. So perhaps you want to move on to other people now. So I, I feel out of your talking, it's like going to, coming to Biennale, it's somehow coming 
partly like back to the roots. Uh, oh, it was uh, unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, very slow was, of course, he was a student at that time yeah. in 1981. And Stanko Horvath was his professor at that time. So I was happy to meet Berislav afterwards, like I said, in 2007. And uh, it was so, such an interesting time because we were there uh, in May. It was in May at that time. And uh, all the students, uh, high school students were graduating and they were walking through the streets and making all these whistling noises and singing and so on. I guess they were happy to get out of high school. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah, that's every year in Croatia, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, we saw it in 1981. So it mm -hmm. was wonderful, but I must to set up Joseph Mazzarolo, I think his contribution was probably the most interesting uh, to that performance because he did a piece called La Testa di Adriana by Murray Schaefer. And uh, Mary Morrison uh, was the uh, singer and they did their performance in the, uh, uh, at the uh, uh, up someplace. Ah, there he is. Maybe he can talk yeah. about that. Yeah, thank you, Michael. And let's see. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Michael has uh, covered a lot of the bases regarding this. I could give you a bit of context in terms of my involvement. Mm -hmm. Michael originally, having planted the seed, said, I'd like you to do Murray Schaefer's La Testa d'Adriana with Mary Morrison in Yugoslavia at the Biennale of Zagreb. And um, I thought, okay, this will never happen. Okay, so you initially say it's a great idea. What happened is... Um, he then told me, we have to put together two hours of theater music. And I said, oh my God, that's a huge undertaking. He says, yeah, but we have to do it. So I thought, okay, I know about La Testa. I can, we can handle that. We have to go to three countries. And he subsequently said, yes, three countries. Bob Aiken was responsible for Hungary. I had to figure out, okay, now I'm gonna hire all the musicians. Because I play concert accordion, we're not going to have piano because there would be maybe some redundancy there. So I hired all these musicians, Erica Goodman on harp, Mary Morrison voice, Bob Aiken uh, flute, and, and all of the others. And I thought they're all going to say no. Everybody said we'd love to go. So now I thought, okay, now they're all committed. Uh, we're going to do this. I got to get the money. So then I wrote to external affairs. It was really external affairs. And I talked to Gilles Lefebvre, who I knew, and he was one of the founders of uh, Jeunesse Musicale International and in Canada. And he said to me, well, Joe, this is June. You have to get three countries and you have to get your get in by uh, December of 1980. And I thought, okay, we'll get a budget in. And he said, we'll let you know sometime after uh, December the 9th. Sure enough, they came through with the money. Now we're really committed. We ended up with uh, commissioning a number of the Canadian composers, Marianne Mazetic, David Keane, uh, Samuel Dolan, you know, so all of these people, Michael Pep, of course, and we had a fabulous program put together integrating the theatrical scene with dancers, the two dancers Michael mentioned and the musicians, and we had to bring our own production team. So there were 20 of us involved. And then I had to convince um, CBC to do that. Um, the people who initially wanted to do it were Fishman Sweet Productions. It was Barbara Sweet, Yuval uh, uh, Fishman, Nick Fishman and Larry Weinstein. In order to do that, John Barnes at CBC said, no, I don't want a contemporary music program and subsidizing it and going over there. But in the end, he said, okay, because you're involving international people and this Zagreb thing is a really big artistic event, we'll go along with it. And he did uh, support our getting the um, money and resources together for CBC to participate. So, and then we got other funding. It was a huge thing that started with Michael's positiveness, my negativeness, because I thought all of this was going to fall apart. 
and we put it together. Um, sadly now, recently, as Michael said, Murray Schaefer has died. David Keene has died. Uh, Samuel Dolan has died, uh, you know, and Eugene Cash, the pianist, has died. There, you know, as the time goes on, a number of very good participants in the project have since passed away, but their legacy lives on through what they did artistically. And we're really proud of the fact that after 40 years, uh, through the resources, and I'm not sure exactly how it happened, of Owen in, uh, in Vancouver, putting together with uh, you at Zagreb, this uh, recognition of us 40 years later. So thank you ever so much. And uh, the, the responses to us were really fabulous. I have to say one thing you probably could edit, and body suits for naissance of David Keene. And uh, Doug Perry, who was on viola, we were hovering on the ground making breathing sounds and everything like that with the birth of a fetus. And his bow got stuck in my rear end and I had to lift myself up. <laughs> and luckily the bow didn't go too far because it was puncturing my, my paper body suit. But we had a phenomenal artistic response to the event in the, in Zagreb, and I have to thank Michael for having the vision initially, and uh, everybody else from Canada who participated in something we'll never forget. And thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. You know, I think it's for these kind of festivals, this internationality and these memories uh, that uh, are created uh, through the projects. This is what makes the history. This is also what gives us the sparkle for the future. So, of course, we remember and it's really yes. it's the 40th uh, anniversary. So definitely it's an important part of our festival. Uh, Owen, I am really, really uh, happy that after so many brainstorming, so much brainstorming and unfortunate uh, position of uh, the festival with budget cuts and anyway, problematic of overseas traveling and everything what comes with the pandemic. Yes, uh, we, we got extremely wonderful material. I really, I've, I've looked all the way through the whole videos and uh, the talks and it's a really, it's strong material. It's, uh, there are strong compositions and uh, the personalities. And I was actually wondering, I mean, the program will be shown, shown after this uh, talk, but um, I was wondering, could you tell us more in this talk now, uh, what impulses did you get during the pandemic or how did it influence you as a, as a cultural creative being and uh, what do you think what do you think how it influenced the people around you who you work with composers musicians uh, organizers how was it in canada and how do you how are you getting out now what's going on yes well we're really pleased to be uh, with you uh, virtually in the um in your biennale and bringing turning point ensemble projects but one of the strange things about the pandemic is that it's it's so international. And so I think in some ways we've had all the same problems that everyone has had all over the world. So Turning Point Ensemble is a you know large chamber group, 15 players. So really when the pandemic hit, all our programs were postponed. And uh, therefore we started coming up with projects that uh, we could do that were kind of pandemic proof. So one was, uh, you will you have it and are presenting five of our films, which is called the One Plus One Plus One Project. And it's a project where um, each of the performers in our ensemble uh, chose a composer to write a solo work for them, uh, five or six minutes. And then we created an art film out of it. So something that wasn't just a, a documentation of a performance, we, we kind of approached this to do a, a film from the beginning. So that was one of the things that we're still involved with that project. We've, we've got nine or 10 films done now and we're gonna keep going so that we will have 15 films and, and you, you will be showing five, films, including one of mine uh, piece exactly. for solo violin, yeah. So that was one of the things we've done. Now um, we are starting 
uh, beginning this fall again to return to our concerts um, with live audience now because uh, this will be probably with a reduced audience in the venues. We've done a lot more filming. That's the other thing. And, and one of the other projects that, that you will be showing uh, had no audience at all, but it was done uh, in a large uh, theater, the Chan mm -hmm. Center at the University of British Columbia. Uh, quite a complex project, which we called TPE Interactive. And that, so we did with a full multi-camera uh, shoot, video shoot and, uh, uh, but now we're going back to kind of hybrid performance where there'll be live live performances and also video captures so that we can um, show that uh, afterwards and make it available to audience. So that's I think kind this of the is solutions. This is one of the points which we all learned throughout the pandemic that recordings are such a great thing. We can show more of ourselves when we record. It's uh, too small only to record the whole time. We need this interaction with the audience and with this social interaction after and before the concert. But I think we all got great materials uh, throughout the pandemic. Yes, yeah. And what do you wish to, is there something what you've noticed or you maybe, uh, I don't know, in this throughout this pandemic i think we all all got somehow uh, confronted with ourselves with a lot of stuff uh, in our careers and lives uh, is there something what you uh, wish to change in the music scene uh, canadian music scene what do you think where what do we need what do you need uh, i think it, it's okay to say we because i think we all need uh, very similar stuff but in your opinion from your point of view is there something which would should strongly get better, which we should strongly get changed, uh, in which direction should our music cultural scene go now? It's not yet after the pandemic, but it's still somehow in direction after. <laughs> well, I think uh, networking, I mean, Canada is a large country and we've been so much in our own um, neighborhoods and as artists trying to find way to sort of virtually connect. So as we come out of that, I think we have these new opportunities. Uh, we're working on a project with a, an opera actually with a Ray Music in Toronto right now. So we're trying really hard to connect both nationally and internationally like uh, we're doing with the Biennale. And um, that's what we're looking to do is to reach out and get back to touring and, um, and find, way, find creative ways to do projects uh, uh, together across, across distances and cultures. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's really important uh, in our scene to reach out and uh, this togetherness. It's something we have to make stronger even more in the future. Sandra, uh, I would love to hear from you. Now I'm making a bit of a switch, continent switch actually, of course. Somehow uh, you are the generation of the 70s, let's say you were born in the 70s. And uh, I was wondering at which point did you start to percept how it is to be a composer in Croatia? And how did this scene here develop in the last decades? What do you think? In which direction did it develop? And uh, how is your perception of the whole thing? Um, yes, when, when I was studying composition, of course, it was a um, very long time ago. It was problem to get an information. Uh, you, you have a really to, to get an effort to find an information. It's very different now, of course. So the, the internet era and the digital era, I think that it changed a lot, uh, a lot in, in, in all the world, but also, also in, uh, in a way of uh, perception of music and way of uh, comp composing itself i think i love for example your generation because you are born still in analog time but the digital come very soon and <laughs> and the composition from people who are 10 years younger than me than me and younger they are, they have less weight of um, of tradition than me 
For example, I, I was uh, in Darmstadt in uh, 1997. And for me, it, everything was shock. I had some things and most of things I heard for the first time in my life. You know, and now it's very easy. You just click YouTube or, or anything in Google and you can find this. Uh, for me, the first um, information was my professor, Stanko Horvath, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, but, but now you can, you can really find the information much more and, and the creativity can come sooner. How can I say? You can open yourself for new music much, much more. Uh, I think this is the, the, the great, uh, the, the biggest difference uh, between my generation and later generation uh, in composing, in, in, uh, in, creati in creativity, you know. And, and also in the scene, uh, yes, it's, it's more open and you, you can see in um, average concert, you can hear more contemporary music, of course, than, than before. Mm -hmm. I remember in, uh, I think it was 2017, if I'm right, you were uh, as part of, a, to, of the chosen composers through the ISCM World Music Days in Vancouver, visiting. Uh, yes, yes we got to perform uh, Sanders piece. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how was your perception on my, of Vancouver? I mean, it's quite probably quite a contrast. It's different. It's that another continent. I think it's always it's always different when you come to another country. It doesn't matter how far it is. It's always something different. But I suppose another continent, uh, another mentality, and everything. It's quite different. So maybe you can tell us some more about your experiences uh, with in touch with Canadian scene over there. Although it was probably a lot international, but still. Uh, well, I, I, I can I can say that the Canadian scene is not so far from our. I, I, I don't feel it's so much different. Maybe maybe there is more different between Croatia and some part of Western Europe, if I can say really. <laughs> but uh, and I was feeling great, uh, really. Uh, Mr. Uh, Underhill was very prepared, and and uh, the, the ensemble. I was feeling very well accepted, and uh, I think it was very well covered uh, by media. But the most important thing, and I think that um, the festival uh, world of world music uh, was very open for diversity. <laughs> so it was not just one uh, one kind of music which is uh, uh, which is favorized. Uh, I, I can say that you can hear very very large very large levels and different kind of musics uh, there, and this this I like because you it's it's good for this kind of festival actually very great experience <laughs> yeah uh, at the end I, I would be really interesting uh, how do you do you have um, the thoughts about gender equality when it comes uh, to choosing programs and how do you uh, which attitude do you take in in this let's say uh, issue uh, you know if you make a program for your concerts for example turning point ensemble uh, how do you approach this fact that it's, you know, I think it's really important always to have the highest quality and it's not always easy to be completely fair. <laughs> so I was wondering, uh, what is your experience with that? Uh, you mean uh, at the festival in Vancouver? Huh? I was actually, sorry, uh, I was now thinking about it because uh, you were talking about the scene there and I was thinking now to ask Owen this question because he's yeah. programming in, in Canada for Turning Point Ensemble and I was curious, how do you approach this? Well, I mean, thankfully there, there is a much uh, stronger gender equity in uh, terms of the compositional community. Um, but we, we do a lot of women composers. Uh, we don't make any um, statement about that. Mm -hmm. We just do it uh, as a natural thing. For example, last time um, Turning Point Ensemble went on um, tour across Canada. We came to Toronto with new music concerts and ensemble Contemporain de Montréal hosted us in Montreal. We actually had all women composers. The whole concert was all women composers, but we didn't um, publicize it as that, and uh, neither was it publicized anywhere else as that. 
these were mostly pieces that we had uh, commissioned and it was uh, a terrific uh, program and we just played it. So, so um, you know, yes, I, as a programmer, I do look at it uh, and uh, try and make sure that the content is high along with other kinds of diversity, but we we don't make a, we're not trying to make any statement about it anymore. That's, that's actually quite healthy, I find. I was, I was just really curious because I live in a German speaking area and it's still, uh, especially in Austria, it's still making, uh, they're making a big statement about it. So I'm curious in different parts of the world how it works. Thank you for that because there are no women composers. We are all composers. <laughs> well, as, I, as I remember, uh, it was sad really at the, at the, at the point of, uh, of the festival in Vancouver that mm -hmm. it was very almost equal 50 50 percent between mm -hmm. uh, female and and male and but i can say that at the our concerts of uh, where i was performed my composition maybe it was almost female <laughs> it was mm -hmm. mo most of us were women in the con but there is really no really as you said there is no male or female <laughs> composers uh, it's, it's just good music or bad music <laughs> yes uh i mean i hope really Thank you, Sandra, and thank you, Owen, for these statements. Uh, I hope, anyway, in the first line, we go on with, like, fighting, <laughs> not fighting, but going the way for art, for music. And I hope for all of us that we make this uh, internationality further on and the connections. And thank you, the generations before, that you gave us all these great memories <laughs> and these strong concerts and events. and. Uh, I think uh, it's really a great uh, ground to build some, some new memories, actually. And I think these uh, concerts that we will see after this talk, they, they amaze me. These musicians, uh, the, they are such high quality. Uh, I mean, it's amazing music. And uh, I'm sure that in the future, we will be able to make great programs together at some other uh, opportunities after the pandemic, despite the pandemic or whatever other troubles come. <laughs> so I would like to conclude this talk and uh, say thank you to all of you uh, for your thoughts, for your uh, memories and good energy that you are giving to music and to the whole uh, scene, Croatian and Canadian. And I hope to meet you at some live moment, not online moment in the future. So take care, stay healthy and stay creative always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hvala. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.